Hello everyone, good morning. Good morning. Nice to have everyone here today again. Thank you for coming. And uh, today we're going to have a talk about uh, this uh, great book, Sex and Destiny, that will be done by our friend Marco <coughs> Denise. But uh, before that, we're going to have uh, our initial praying by our friend Mateus. Uh, initial praying, no, initial reading by our friend Mateus and the initial prayer by our friend Ellie. Advice is only valuable if you are willing to act on it. When you are in any type of difficulty, ask a more experienced, better equipped person for help and advice. But do not try to prove your own opinion correct. Listen with care, think, and then take the decision that seems most suitable. On the other hand, do not disdain the orientation and advice you get or are looking for either. Examine everything and keep what is good. Taught the Apostle in the name of good. Good morning. Good morning. Let's close our eyes. Bring our thoughts to our dear Lord. Thank Him for everything that He does in our lives. To have brought us the Spiritism, to enlighten our living, our existence, and helping us to pursue a better spiritual enlightenment. That God, in all your greatness, in light also our friend Marco Denise in his lecture today. And in our Master and Guide Jesus, help us to have a week blessed, and most of all, with wisdom to make the right decisions and possibly in us to help each other as much as possible. So be it. So be it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, just one second here. Let me prepare everything. Okay. It has been a while since the last time I was here. So, like the last time I was a little bit, I'm still a little bit nervous, but <laughs> let's see. Let's continue our studies about Spiritism. And uh, we are very thankful for the opportunity to be here to talk about this wonderful book that is part of the Andrea Luis collection of novels, uh, Life in the Spiritual World. Uh, Nosso Lar, the first book, was uh, published in 1944 and was the first one of 13 books. And our study of Spiritism, without those gifts from Andrea Luis, um, <laughs> was not be the same, right? So, and so Andrea Luis was the author of all the books, and they are psychographed by Chico Xavier. Some of those books are also psychographed by Valdo Vieira. And this is exactly the case of the book that we're going to talk today, right? Sex and Destiny. Sex and Destiny was published in 1963. And the part one of the book was psychographed by Valdo Vieira. And the part two, with 14 chapters, the part one has also 14 chapters, so the part two was psychographed by Chico Xavier. And like you can see here, like my age, is turning 55 years old this year. And, but, but the contents of the book, they stay current, right? And it continues to be, unfortunately, a burning issue to many of us. So the story is about two families, Torres and Nogueira, and the stories of love, passion, vanity, lust, and hate. Andrea Luis in this book explains the effects of the sexual experience 
and the conduct of the incarnates have in their immortal spirit and in their future. What I like and what I think is more important about this book and all the, the books about uh, Andrea Luis uh, is that he doesn't speak about angels, right? He talks about the spirit close to us. And it, it, when, if, when you think about the angels, they are so far. In, if you look in the point of view of where we are today, where about our evolution, right? So that talking about angels, it, it doesn't make sense. It, 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 it's not related to us yet, right? So, so far away where we are. And so he talks about the spiritus that is passing the same thing we are right now. Right? So he talks about the spirits that has part of light and part of shadow. And most of the time, especially in my case, more shadow than light. So, before I start, I have to tell you that I'm going go, I'm go to about to tell the whole story. Right? So, at least I, I cannot cover everything. It's just one hour, right? So it's impossible for me to cover everything, and I, I remove a lot of important uh, subjects and details of the story in order to put everything together in one hour. So, but I am. Uh, I have to tell you this that I'm going to tell the whole story, right? So, or at least for the most important information about the book. But I promise, I promise, after this, uh, this presentation here, for this lecture, you will want to read this book. I can guarantee you. If you did that already, you want to read it again. I can guarantee you that. So, bef two more warnings before we start, okay? This is a true life story. It was passed in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, around 1960s, okay? Nothing has been removed from the truths that compose the story, nothing. It's a real life story. And of course, like uh, the soap operas we see in, the, in Brazil, right? All the names have been changed, right? So the names we, I'm gonna talk you here, they're not real names. Of course, for obvious, obvious reasons. And all the characters, after being consulted by Andrea Luis, they are kind enough to give him permission to write the book, right? Just with the purpose to our own edification. The second warning is all the credits of the illustrations that I'm going to show here in this presentation uh, are in the footer of each slide. And they are not real. Okay, so they are not real, and also they are not obtained by any medium naked method or anything, right? AJ, they just reflect the image of the designer makes uh, to the scene to describe the book. And of course, was authorized by Brazilian Spirit Federation, FEB. Okay, so with all this base cover, Our story starts with our friend Andrea Luis deciding to help his friend Pedro Neves. Uh, Neves was having uh, some family matters to do. And when Neves, a devoted uh, servant in the Minister of Assistant in Nosular, he disincarnate, he left his wife in Edina at the middle young age. Okay, and also he left three small children. Uh, Beatriz, I don't know if it, uh, it's capable, it, it, the, the colors here are not well, I didn't choose the colors very well, but anyway. So this is Beatriz and Jorge and Ernesto. Okay, later on in Edina, married another man. Uh, his name was not mentioned in the book. That's why I put here unknown. And um, Andre and Nevis went back to Earth to visit Beatrice. 
Okay, Beatriz is right here. And um, beside her was placed um, with the purpose of to protect her from uh, disincarnate uh, entities, the bad ones, right, that could surround us, depending on your thoughts. Uh, was Amaru was the health caregiver was placed be beside her. So dying, Beatriz was worried about the bounds that held her on the earth. And he was more worried about her loving of her husband and his son. So his husband is Nemesio. Actually, I don't know if you, can, you guys can read here Nemesio. And his only son, or her only son, uh, his name is Gilberto. So Nemesio works in the commercial real estate. And at his, uh, his request, Marcia Nogueira, his accountant, was acting as an improved, uh, improvised nurse for Beatriz. She's having an affair with uh, Nemesio, right? So physically they look like a father and daughter. She had seduced Nemesio, and, but she, she actually doesn't feel anything. She didn't feel, not feel anything uh, for him. In the reality, she is desperately in love of his son, Gilberto. Well, Nemesio was treating Beatriz very well, acting like, like nothing was happening between him and Marina. But he was madly in love and told Marina that he was just waiting for Beatriz to die to make her his wife forever, right? That's when this venerable spirit here just entered in the room. So I tried to create this kind of like a, a chart here so you guys can follow the story, otherwise you, it's easy to get lost. So Felix is a supervisor in, um, in, in Osular of a recovery institute linked to the Minister of Regeneration. He was famous for his goodness and patience. And he also knew was the apostle of generosity and the common sense. Neville was really, really upset with the Genesio, or Nemesio and the Marina affair, but Felix invited Andrea Luis and him to help Genesio in uh, Magnet Pass, explaining that Nemesio was really, really sick. When the procedure was finished, he turned back to Nevis, feeling that he was very disappointed with that, and said, it's not for us to condemn anyone for wrongs in which you yourselves might fall, or into which might have actually fallen in the past. Let us understand so that we may be understood. Pedro didn't say anything, right? So obviously influenced by Felix. And after a few moments, he started like praying humbly. Then all three, headed to an apartment in Flamengo, a district of Rio de Janeiro, where they would meet Marina's relatives. So Marina was a daughter of Claudio Nogueira and Márcia. Felix was very concerned about that family, about that home. So the family is terminally refused to engage in any religion and no one of the family was interested in cultivating the habit of uh, praying or learning or helping others. So 
no one of the fo the, 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 the four family member was any interest to serve. In the apartment, they met Claudio and two discarnate vampires that we also call obsessors. Okay, the Moreira was the very close one to Claudio. They, the two obsessors, they could not see Felix, Andrea Luis, or Pedro Neves because they were in the different frequency. They are in the lower frequency, so they can't see. Felix, Andrea Luis, and Pedro Neves can see them, but they cannot see each other. Claudio, in the book, it's very clear that Claudio is not experiencing any kind of obsession. He hosts them and voluntarily accepts their guidance. Different than Beatrice that was ill and about to discarnate, that's why they put Amaru close to her, right? So Claudio is in the perfect health and was living the kind of life he wants. He wants to live. Claudio didn't see them as a bad guys. He see them or he saw them as partners, our dear friends. And Felix explained that, that nothing will justify uh, an act of the force to try to separate them with the purpose to being helpful, right? Because they are, they are together because they attract each other. So the fourth member of the family that was not mentioned before is Marita. So this is, this is Marina and this is Marita. Okay, she was in her bedroom. And she had been adopted by the owners of the house when she was just, just born, right? So 20 years ago. Aracelia, the mother she had never known, had been hired as a maid by the couple, right? And when Marcia gave birth to Marina, the devoted maid got pregnant. After Marina birth, Aracelia became very and extremely depressed. And one day she committed suicide. And she did that, uh, swallow a large po uh, uh, dose of poison. Okay, then Marcia told Marita at 11 years uh, of age that she was not part of the family. She was an orphan. And of course, like you can imagine, that revelation broke Marita's heart. From that day on, her life completely changed, right? The only one that was the same was her adopted father, right, Claudio, that devoted to her the same love or the love in the same degree that Massa and Marina was withheld theirs. So Marita had no luck with men. All the men that crossed her life uh, just tried to take advantage of her, right? But one day in her boss office, she was providing some kind of information related to work she finally met the love of her life. A young man that was representing the interest of his father regarding the real estate business. And of course, it was love at first sight, right? So she loved him and felt love in return. Their relationship got fire very quickly and she had given herself to him. Right, so they become sexually intimate. But what a surprise, the young man was Gilberto. Like you can see here, four people linked, right? So a woman, a young woman between father and son, and a young man between two sisters. Not too different than we see today, right? So. Anyway, 
Despite of Gilberto promise to marry Marita, later he fell in love with uh, Marina. Right? And broke with uh, Marita. He broke with her. So, Marcia has betrayed Marcio many, many times with many, many different men. Right? And Marcio also was very disappointed with uh, Marina uh, and her double and promiscuous life. Then Claudio, feeling so unhappy and, of course, pushed by Moreira, decided to seduce Marita. So Moreira was right behind him saying, now is our time, take her, take her, right? And he went to the room with that intention, right? So at this point, Andrea Luis and Pedro Neves didn't know what to do and they start praying. And begging for help from the higher realms to, s to save the, 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 this young lady. Of course, the, the angels didn't come in person, but the help did come. And they heard the sound of the front door being unlocked. So Marcia, his wife, Claudio's wife, entered in the room. So Claudio quickly composed himself and got uh, uh, detached from Moreira. Moreira was kind of like in him. And he invented an excuse to be in the girl's bedroom, saying that he smelled some guys and then he went there just to open the windows and blah, blah, blah. And Marita, very embarrassed of what was just happening, pretended to be as asleep. So Andrea Luis went back to Marita's room where she was totally devastated. Suddenly she remembered her mother. She knew nothing, nothing at all about her father, but she reflected on the suffering of her mother, young and abandoned, exactly like her. Then she begged her mother's spirit to bless, strain and protect her. Despite of Marita has no religion beliefs, she said a silent prayer, one that was worth of being called a profound invocation. And what happened? Aracelia, her mother, was not ready yet to help her daughter, but assisted by another a uh, spirit, she came to mitigate her daughter's anguish and she sang a old lullaby, right? The suffering girl suddenly calmed down and felt in the deep sleep. On the next day, feeling much, much better, uh, she, Marita, called Marcia, saying that he had something very important to tell her. In the afternoon, they met in this uh, ice cream shop and Marita explained or described to Marcia all Claudio's attitudes in all details, right? She wanna move out of the house to avoid any kind of a scandal, uh, but she didn't have a place to go, right? Since they, are, they were the only family she had. Marcia didn't believe a word. Right? So we see this happening all the time. Right? She didn't believe a word. She told Marita that Claudio and her come to the conclusion that she was mentally imbalanced and she needed psychiatric treatment. The whole thing was uh, just a product of Marita's uh, imbalanced imagination. With no way to prove her allegations, Marita could do nothing and remain silent, right? Few days later, Marita arranged, oops, sorry. Marita arranged a, a date with Gilberto in a place that rent rooms for lovers by hour, right? So she was trying to get back to, to, to Gilberto, or at least 
convince him to, 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 to get back. So Claudio discovered everything, and with Moreira's help, they come up with a dark plan, a very dark plan. They met Gilberto in a bar, and Claudio started a conversation telling him that he knew it about the situation between him and his two daughters. Claudio also said that Marita misinterpreted Gilberto's feelings, and he needs Gilberto's cooperation so that Marita would not suffer as much. Claudio made up a story that the girl was misguided and very sick, and he asked Gilberto to not show on that date with Marita. Claudio himself would meet her at the range of time, explaining all the situation and tell her that he was going to send her and her mother, Marcia, to Argentina for them to relax and, and rest. Gilberto, of course, quickly agree with, uh, with Marcio, or with Claudio, sorry, because he saw an opportunity to free himself from the commitment that he had with uh, Marita, because he kind of like forced her, right? So, Andrea Luis, not knowing about the plan, right, but feeling a coming disaster, sent a urgent message to Felix, right, and asked for help. And while uh, Andre Luis was waiting for Felix to come, he went to place to place to see if someone was capable of being helping him, right? But every place that he went, no one was praying, everywhere thoughts about sex and money, and so he couldn't find anyone to help him. He even approached the Marita's supervisor, so I tried to imprint in his mind the idea of making her to stay late, to work extra hours, so that she could not go to the date. But the supervisor thought, thinking, that was thinking by himself, and he rejected Andrea Luis's uh, influence, running some numbers in his mind about like uh, extra pay and the labor laws involved in this matter, right? So he refused that thing. So Andrea Luis has nothing to do, nothing else to do than go to Crescina place. That's the place where the lovers go to have like some intimate uh, encounters. Claudio was already there talking with a Fafa. That's the name in the book, so. <laughs> So a business doorman that was already, despite I was not completely uh, night yet, but he's already a little bit drunk. And he agreed, of course, in exchange of a good tip, to cause a 15 minutes blackout by unscrewing a fuse in the fuse box, in a fuse box, right? So you guys can imagine what's gonna happen Felix arrived, the lights went out, Claudio Moreira entered in the room, revealing two very sick minds, right? So their mental state was so filled with the sexual appetites, and it, that, that feeling was so powerful that it would be impossible for Andrea Luis or Felix to try to find the smallest opening to stop them. We cannot call that a rape because Marina surrendered herself, thinking uh, Claudio was Gilberto, right? So Andrea Luis and Felix just left the room. They was not gonna watch that. And 50 minutes late, the lights come on again and they heard, of course, a terrible scream from Marita, full of horror, and saw Marita Marita running away. Late for a f just a few minutes, she was late for a few minutes to stop the tragedy, Marcia, Claudio's 
wife enter in the room right and she was so mad and she started wailing at the cloud to say you are a monster monster and she finally unveiled the secret that she kept for a long time he abused his own daughter Meanwhile, Marita, soaked in tears, running away on the streets, right? She want to die. She want to die. So he headed, she headed to a pharmacy and hiding her real intention, she invented a story about a very sick pet and tried to convince the pharmacist, uh, his name is Salomon, uh, to sell a medication to put the pet to rest. So Felix and Andrea, looking at all the situation and realizing Marita was going to kill herself, right? So we need to do something. Then what they did is they approached Solomon, right? And begged him to analyze the situation, right? To take a good look to the, um, the, the young woman, the Marita. So, so tired, alone, in the middle of the night and with a very weird story. Right, so who is gonna go in a pharmacy and try to buy some stuff to kill a pet in the middle of nine and she was so desperate. Anyway, Salomon, influenced by that, realized, uh-oh, there is something wrong here. And he stopped looking for the sleeping pills and gave her a few mild sedatives instead. Right, even if she decided to take off them, it's not gonna hurt her. Right, so it's just, just gonna put her to sleep for a while. So Marina thanked him and left. So she walked two blocks in Atlantica. So Atlantica is an avenue that runs parallel to Copacabana Beach, right? And she jumped from uh, the boardwalk to the beach, the sand beach, and uh, she found a spot that was seen darker than the rest of the beach. And she drank all the pills, all 10 pills at once. And she slept very peaceful. So at that moment, Andrea Luis and Felix start like they begun an operation to restoring the, the girl's energy, right? They took measures to keep her from leaving her out of control body, applying some comfort pass. But all of a sudden, from nowhere, appear a cleaner that start shooking her and shouting, wake up, Trump, wake up. So imagine what happened with, with Marita. So her head started like spinning. She asked herself if she had died and she was now in hell in the front of a demon, right? <laughs> so she managed to stand up in panic and we run to the street. She ran to the streets. And I believe that you guys are now are imagining the worst happening. She was hit by a speeding car. The part one of the book stops here. So the part two starts with Marita in the hospital, lying in the bed. She was kind of in coma. Claudio was devastated and bursting into tears. Moreira, the obsessor, also was crushed by Marita's suffering. Felix, in the in other hand, was very happy because the high spirits gave to Marita some kind of a moratorium. So she would stay alive for 15 to 20 more days max. So those days are very important. That's why Felix was so happy, because it would give Marita the opportunity to prepare herself for the renewal, while at the same time, it's going to give Claudio, Marcia, and Marina a chance to reconsider their current life. Felix explained that in a few hours, she would be able to think and hear again but she will not be able to speak. Felix seeing Moreira so touched 
right? Remember, Moreira was a bad guy, right? So, but he was so touched by what, uh, what Marito was passing that he convinced him to, with Andrea Luis's assistant, start helping Marita to keep her breathing system working properly. He, Moreira became very extremely devoted to her, and that was his turning point. Mar Marcia refused to go to the hospital. Their uh, uh, adopted mother, she refused to go to the hospital. Uh, Marina too, she said was so busy with Beatriz, with Beatriz because she could die any moment. Right, so Claudio was alone, completely alone, and his heart was broken, broken. The idea of the daughter, his daughter, tried to commit suicide because of him and of his wrongs, he did with her and her mother was burning his souls. Later in the afternoon, Salomon, remember Salomon, the pharmacist? He comes to visit Marina with a friend. Salomon and his friend both were spiritists. And uh, his friend, uh, his name was Agostinho, and who was a regular and highly respected uh, client in the Claudius Bank. Claudio works in the bank. So with Claudio's permission, he administered a longitude pass to Marita, just to help her, right? But when Agostinho, uh, when Agostinho was told that Claudio had never any contact with any religious principles, he offered him the gospel according to Spiritism. Claudio feeling that he was very sick deep in, this, in his soul, right? And of course, suggested by Andrea Luis, he just opened the book. And by luck, Right, we used to say that by luck. He opened the chapter, Charity Toward Criminals. And it was very interesting to see so like, Let me read this thing, I wanna read my own sentence. But what a surprise, the book did not condemn his life at all. So chapter 11 of the, the Gospel According to Spiritism, item, uh, item 14, it says, you must love unfortunates and criminals as God creatures, to whom forgiveness and mercy will be granted if they repent. As is the case with you for the wrongs that you committed against his law. Do not judge, for the judgment you render will be more severe applied to you. And you have need of indulgence, indulgence for the sins you commit, you continually commit. God allows great criminals to dwell amongst you to serve you as a lesson. So that first contact with the truth of the spirit crack his atoms from top to bottom. Cloud could not stop reading. So he spent like four hours immersing in the book and without realizing. And he started feeling like a new man or I start feeling like the new man was coming through. And Claudio confessed he, to himself that for the first time in a long, long time, he looked at his daughter's face, right, without a slightest hint of a sexual fascination. He let tears run down his face while he prayed whispering close to her, forgive me, forgive my daughter, forgive your father. Of course, Marida didn't respond. However, his caress had infused her different energies and she started returning to herself. Right? She recovered the control of her brain, but she was not able to speak. Was, she was not able to coordinate the movements to require to speak. She could feel, she could remember, 
she start remember everything that happened to her. She blame her sister Marina for everything that uh, wrong has happened to her, and mentally picture her as being the unforgivable enemy. Unfortunately, our friend Moreira, that was now becoming like a new spirit, a good spirit, was paying attention of her thoughts. And under of the pretext of helping uh, Marita, he left and looked for revenge. Meanwhile, Beatrice had disincarnate. Her spirit, unconscious, rests in the arms of like a loving sister and assisted by her father, Pedro Neves. So Beatrice prepared herself very well for, for that moment. And she will be taken right away to an assistant of institution in the spiritual plane until she recover all her energies. Then Moreira and his colleagues here enter in the room, right? And of course they approach Marina and they shoot angrily. Murder! Murder! Because in his mind, he, Marina was the cause of what uh, Marit was suffering. Of course, immediately Marina felt ill at ease. Then Felix arrived and he opened his arms to Moreira like a father and convinced him to go back to Marita because she was getting worse without his help, right? The Felix intention was to remove Moreira from, from that place, right? And um, of course, Moreira didn't think twice. She went back to, uh, he went back to the hospital. Unfortunately, the troublemakers that he brought, they stay and they continue to uh, perturb uh, or uh, affect uh, Marita, Marina, sorry. Marina's mind. Five days later, the obsessors had drained all her energy. And since Marina didn't get any better, Nemesio went to Nogueira's apartment to talk to Marcia about Marina. They saw each other for the first time. Nemesio confessed his romance with Marina to her mother, and he left very impressed with Marcia beauty and intelligence. He went back home, but he could not get Marcia's image out of his head. So he thought, okay, I need to see Marina immediately. But when he opened the door, what he saw? He saw Marina and Gilberto kissing. So Gilberto couldn't see his father, but Marina saw everything and she just passed out, okay? Nemesio turned around shocked because he didn't know about the relationship between his son and Marina. And Gilberto, unaware uh, what happened, just looked for Nemesio and asked what to do. So Marina just fainted, what do I do? And Nemesio, very upset, told him, call a doctor and also Marina's mother too. So Marina, under obsession, she became demented and irrecognizable, right? And the doctor sent her to a psychiatric hospital. Two, day, two days later, Nemesio and Marcia started having an affair just to console each other. <laughs> So exactly two weeks after the accident in Copacabana, Marina now is ready to disincarnate. So Marina was inspired P. Those blessed days that Marita was in the hospital was very good for him to learning and suffering and actually changed him inside, right? And Felix announced, Felix announced that her time arrived. So, Claudio feeling that, started like saying goodbye, and he confessed all the wrongs 
and beg her for forgiveness. Of course, Marita couldn't say anything, she couldn't speak, but she concentrated, she couldn't hear, right? She was uh, uh, seeing and feeling everything, and she saw all the devotion of uh, her father did with her all those days, and she concentrated all her energies, and she prayed mentally, forgiveness, O oh Lord, forgiveness for my father, forgiveness for me, forgiveness for all those who have fallen. So, after Marina passed, Claude felt like a new man, and he wanted to reconstruct his life. He tried to reconcile with Marcia, but of course she reject and ask for a legal separation. Then Claudio went to visit uh, Marina. His job with Marina finished. Who was there? Moreira. Moreira now was helping Marina. With his heart full of love, Claudio tried to comfort Marina. He talked to her in a tone she had never heard before. Feeling encouraged, she confessed to her father, her father all the artifice she used to seduce Gilberto and Nemesio. And she also told him that Nemesio visited her four days ago, and, but she told Nemesio very clearly that she, wanna, she would never leave Gilberto. And for her to be, uh, she asked for, for him to beg uh, for, oh my God, sorry, to for, forgive her and ask him to see her as uh, uh, his daughter. Of course, he had become very furious and had threatened her, saying that if she left him, he would kill her. He would never allow her to be happy with that son that he now began to hate. And now so he told her that he was having an affair with her mother while she was waiting for her. So Claudio realized this, how the serious the situation is and tried to comfort his daughter, promised to help her find peace and hope for her tormented mind. So Andrea Luis went to the Recover Institute where Felix uh, is the supervisor and, uh, and exactly in the, institute, in the institute where Beatriz and Marita were, right? So Marita was interned in a rest area uh, for convalescence, and she's being prepared to an, an exceptional and an emergency reincarnation. So what happened with Marina was completely out of the plans that she was returning very soon to the family environment in Rio de Janeiro, just to not m waste measures that was put in place to her the redemption uh, of her past. Beatrice was recovering very well and looked much, much younger than what we saw here. And she was asking for permission to visit her uh, uh, son and husband, right? But uh, Felix, knowing what was going on in Earth, he postponed that. He denied. And he said, well, we need to wait until the right time. So after months of treatment, Marina returned to Flamengo, safeguarded to her father's love. She had discovered a father with a very big heart, which she had not known about until then. And she also discovered a faith, the spiritism, that renewed her hopes. So the apartment was perfectly peaceful. She, they had like a weekly uh, home gospel sessions, always assisted by Solomon, the pharmacist. And Gilberto, that initially was trying to avoid Marina due do do to his father's revelations about their love affair, but still loving each other, they decide to forget the past and start over, right? So with the young couple together again, Claudio was rejoiced with praise of gratitude. Later on, Nemesio found out about Gilberto and Marina. And the Mesu star made arrangements to move Gilberto to a city in the south of the country. Of course, with the pretext to look at his uh, commercial interest, but in reality, what he wants is to separate them again. 
Finally, Gilberto rejected, and he went to marry Marina. That's what he told uh, his father. Nemesio, completely out of control, attacked his son and kicked him out of the house, saying that he never want to see him again. Of course, Claudio offered help. He got Gilberto a job in the bank, and the wedding preparations start. Nemesio, upset and very unhappy, went with Marcia in a trip to Europe, a long trip to Europe. So Gilberto and uh, Marina's wedding took place exactly one year after uh, Marita's disincarnation. So due to the Marina's interference, Marita couldn't marry Gilberto. So now she was going to return to life and as a, uh, uh, as a daughter of the couple. She was going to be a daughter of Gilberto and Marina. In preparation for her reincarnation, Felix Andrea took Marita to see Claudio. The ever vigilant Moreira was there and she got visibly moved when she recognized Marita. Claudio in spirit was uh, stand beside his sleeping body and he looked uh, as he was waiting for her visit. Right? So Claudio could not see Felix, Moreira and Andrea Luis and after a very few moments, a very uh, emotional moments, uh, Felix left Carrie Marita while Moreira and uh, Andrea Luis helped Claudio to uh, recover to his physical body. But he woke up with his heart, heart warmed, feeling that Marita would re reincarnate. Then Marina completed the 50 month of her pregnancy, living with her husband and her father. Her life was pure happiness. Suddenly one day, well, of course, she started looking desperately. And Claudio started asking her, what's going on, what's going on? And she showed Claudio a letter that she received from Nemesio. Okay? He confessed he was tired of everything except her, whom he was still in love. Nemesio was still in love with uh, Marina. And he found about the marriage, and he was coming back to Brazil. He wanted her back. Otherwise, he's going to put a bullet in his mind, in his head. Claudio, anticipating this, another star coming, see, he consoled his daughter, saying, uh, he would go to see Nemesio in person, right, and ask him for serenity and consideration. And at the same time, he's going to tell the news about the baby that was coming, and he for sure think that Nemesio is going to be uh, is going to melt Nemesio and he's going to be uh, uh, transform him. On the following day, Claudio tried to keep his promise, and he found out that Marcia and Nemesio returned to Brazil, and Marcia just had left Nemesio. Why? Because now Nemesio is broke. So dishonest, made by subordinates. Gilberto's absence and a long trip during like a very critical time were the trigger to his to Nemesio's bankrupts. All this information made Cloud believe that it was impossible to have a positive meeting with uh, with Nemesio. Even so, after lunch, with the help of a prayer, he went to Nemesio's residence. He was right. Nemesio refused to see him. Understanding the situation, he went back to work and asked for a private meeting with his boss. Right? He explained the whole situation to his boss and was granted with six months uh, leave of absence. So to rest and to look after his daughter. Cloud reassured Marina that Nemesio would never bother her again. So Marina was overjoyed with news uh, and the time that 
uh, father and daughter were passed together. So for almost two months, Claudio intercept and destroy all the letters that Nemesio sent to her daily, daily. So at times, he wrote that was going to blow his brain out and leave a note for the police saying, blaming her, right? In orders, he would forbid her to have a children with Gilberto and was pure prisoners. So Claudio, again, suffering alone, unable to share his torn of pain with anyone. Recommended by the doctor, Marina should walk to do some light exercise, right? So then father and daughter, and now uh, uh, Claudio acting as her bodyguard, start to walk to the beach every day at sunset. One day, Claudio and Marina were crossing the street when a car, again a car, Break, breaking out traffic rules, went towards them at high speed. Claudio had exactly one second to push Marina out of the way before being hit. On the hospital, Claudio begged Gilberto and Marina to be benevolent with Márcio, uh, with Márcia and Nemesio, right? And his last wish was, if it is a girl, She's to be called Marita. So he went in a coma and died four hours late. Claudio, after a quick recovery in the spiritual realm, was allowed to go back to Earth and watch over his family for 10 years. Moreira, that was still working alongside with Marina, was going to help him. See how now the things switch? So Gilberto and Marina, remembering Claudio's last request just before he died, went to visit Nemesio. Nemesio had decided to murder Marina and then commit suicide. But when he committed the crime, he saw that he struck Claudio instead of Marina. So consequently, he went into despair and had a sufferer stroke. He was semi-paralyzed and now unable to speak. Meanwhile, Beatrice was aware of the fact that Marina, this is oh, discarnate father, had received permission to stay near his family in a mission of assistance. So she thought, okay, I want to at least see my son and husband again, right? Felix didn't approve. Felix didn't approve. But after many requests, and even with the Pedro Neves interference and very concerned, Felix had no choice than agree. And exactly like he was thinking was going to happen, Beatrice, seeing her husband paralyzed, she paled. She bombarded Nemesio with questions, what happened, what have you done? And unaware of the fact that he was automatically answering all uh, questions of his wife, he reviewed his mind, all the events that happened since her disincarnation. Beatrice, of course, gone insane. Okay? Two weeks of hard work and constant attention, no improvement at all. Beatrice was taken to the hospital in the Felix Institute in order to go as sleep therapy and find some memories in her previous existence that could help to so, uh, help her, right? So like a surgery with eight people involved, the experiment began, Beatrice with a voice completely different than to he, was, he had before, starts saying that her name was Leonor da Fonseca Telles, born in Rio de Janeiro, 19, uh, uh, 1792, sorry. She married a young Portuguese man called Domingos who was living in Brazil. She had a son named Álvaro. Domingos died prematurely when she was 22. Then she married a rich jeweler, Justiniano da Fonseca Teles. And she was pleased to see that both stepson and stepfather got along very well. Since she did not have any children from her second marriage, Álvaro stood between them like a link or a bound of light and love. 
When he was 15, he left Brazil to study in Lisbon and Paris. Leonor's best friend, Brits Castanheira, was married to Teodoro, and they were both quite young and had the only one daughter, Virginia, age 11. Leonora was over 40 and Breaches was not yet 30, but they were very close, like we say today, uh, BFF, best friend forever. <laughs> Their husband felt the same way about each other, despite the difference between the age. Her son, Álvaro, returned from Brazil when she was 22 years of age. Justiliano and Leonor, very happy, decide to introduce Álvaro to their social environment. And the horrible nightmare started. Álvaro and Brits were introduced, and despite of Brits being a mother and married, right? So both were taken with a mutual passion, and they start seeing each other. Later on, Theodore discovered their affair. He did not leave home because the love of his daughter, but then he started an affair with a Marina de Castro, also called Nanina, Naninha. Brits didn't care, right? She encouraged Theodore and Nanina's affair as much as possible so that she could be free of him. After four years, I'm almost finished. <laughs> After four years, I will become bored with Brits. He informed his family that he left a fiancé in Lisbon and he needed to go back. But he was afraid that his lover, Brits Castanheira, would commit suicide. He came up with a plan to end the affair and knowing that Brits really liked jewelry, he insinuated to his stepfather, Justiniano, that she was in love with him. Justiniano accepted the stepson's suggestions and managed to impress Brits with the rare gifts. Until in their first meeting, arranged by Alvaro himself, the young man burst in on them, playing the role of that outraged partner that was betrayed, right? And then he found the excuse he wanted and left to Portugal. This can change Brit's personality so deeply. She became a horrible, calculated, and cruel woman. She transformed Justiniano in a man of corrupted sexuality, extorting more and more money of him, until the point to sell her own daughter, that at that time was 15, to her lover, an old man. So, of course, Justiniano abandoned uh, his wife, Leonor, and became living permanently with a, a 15 teenager, 15 years old teenager, Virginia. Of course, that caused a discord, a big fight between Teodoro and Justiniano. And after 11 years of conflict, Teodoro was murdered. The homicide was blamed to some runaway slaves, but Naninha, however, had no doubt that Justiniano had ordered it, and she wanted revenge. So she started a relationship with another man, and both murdered Justiniano in a fake accident. At that point, Felix said, stop, stop. I need to give you some explanations. And then uh, she asked for Beatrice reincarnation records. In that institution, they had like a reincarnation records. So her present name was preceded by the name Leonor da Fonseca Telles, and she incarnated at the request of Felix himself in 1906 in the home of Pedro Neves. Okay, and then Felix requests all the other individuals mentioned by Beatriz the connection with this in the institute. So Justiniano was Nemesio Torres, now a businessman with increased debts. Teodoro Castanheira was now no Claudio Nogueira. Now discarnate, but the work in the physical plane, displaying very significant spiritual growth. Virginia Castanheira 
was now Marina Torres, who also displayed promising indications of inner reform. Naninha de Castro had been Marita, currently undergoing rebirth at direct request of Felix himself. And Brits Castanheira, like you guys can imagine, as no Marcia, Marcia Nogueira, whose file was truly heartbreaking. Her record contained a long list of abortions, desertions from duty, not mentioned several indirect irris responsibilities for broken homes and sacrificed lives. Hers was the one of the institution's worst files ever. The Justiniano killer in association with Naninha was not mentioned, but probably was Gilberto Torres. But the only file they could not find, so the one that triggered the horrible nightmare, and of course, was Alvaro. They couldn't find the records. Then Felix, for everybody's surprise, informed that Alvaro and him, Felix, were one and the same spirit. So Felix was the cause of this whole nightmare. Now, begging for an opportunity to reincarnate near Brits, he promised to would work hard in his own regeneration and give her life back to her since he was the tormentor and she was the victim. Four years passed, Felix now is called Sergio Claudio. He had a temperament completely different than uh, from his sister Marita, and already demonstrates serenity and lucidity in his words and thoughts. And finally, Marcia and her grandson had enjoyed their sublime reunion. Well, the book finished here. Right, but story didn't. And if you make the math, some of them could be still incarnated up between us. So then I finish recommend you to read this book to get all the details that I was forced to omit here. And again, thank you for forgiving me the opportunity to read this book. And now it's one of my favorite books. Thank you. Thanks everyone, and thank you, uh, Marco. Was a great uh, summary. Uh, like most of the uh, Andrea Luis book, you're gonna see all these relationships, right? For those who had a chance to read, everyone has a different theme, but they all show this uh, the result of our own acts, the action and reaction, and uh, the fact that you're always gonna come back to have an opportunity to redo a mistake and so on. And it's interesting because most of the books, if not every single one, the mentor of the book is always the one who long time ago in the past caused all the trouble. So, but for me, it's a great uh, example to tell us that th we always have a chance to redo it, right? So we always have a chance to transform ourselves even for the wars we have done in the past and try to help the others that in some way we were a cause of their afflictions and pain. Yeah. So any comments or questions uh, from anyone in here or from the internet as well? Oh, I uh, just a comment yeah. because uh, to, to your point, I think it shows us that whatever we do, we might not understand, but we have responsibility. Exactly. So any struggles that we might go through, it's always important to keep in mind that there is, it's not easy, but we have to be resilient and never say things are unfair. Exactly. Yeah. We can always move on and start a new beginning to have a new end. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's, it's a call for us to have a different attitude towards our own uh, afflictions in life as well, right? Because that is a result of something yeah. and uh, so it's always an opportunity for us to to make it different 
and not see ourselves as a victim. Exactly. We we build our destiny every single moment, right? Yeah. So, um, even in the case of Marita, there was not planning to have to her uh, to happen to her what actually did, right? So uh, now they gave her another opportunity, and uh, we can imagine what's gonna happen when Marina, uh, Marita reach like the the, the teenager age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the conflict is she's gonna have with uh, Marina, right? Yeah. And the love she's gonna have for as uh, a mother, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And the love is she's going to have for uh, uh, her, her father, right? Yeah, so, exactly. And then and w we see that happen today, every day, no, no, right? No, no, so, no. and you don't understand, but <laughs> looking yeah. this thing here, you start thinking, oh my God. And yeah. Very interesting. So. All right. So now it's a time for us to receive the passes. We thank you everyone from the Facebook and then the internet uh, that is following us. And uh, let's prepare our minds for, for the passes.